Hello artsies, this is Mrs. B. Welcome to my art and penmanship. For today's video, I will be doing watercolor tulips with calligraphy like this. I already have my sketch on my watercolor paper. I will use the Kolinsky Sable watercolor brush size 4. It is best to have a brush with a pointy tip like this. Here is the reference photo at the upper right to get the same shade of these tulips. I'm mixing John Brilliant with a bit of opera, diluted it with lots of water. So today I will make a bouquet of tulips in a vase like in the reference photo that a friend sent to me. I think this is the best shade that matches the color of the tulips on the photo. I started to paint the left petal of the flower with a light wash. I put the red arrow on the reference photo to show you where it is. By observing it, it's light and below it, it has a shadow. So I will use a very light value of sepia for the shadows. By the way, for the materials, I am using Canson XO 300 GSM watercolor paper. The original size of the paper is 24 inches by 18 inches, so it's huge. I cut it into smaller pieces and I use some of the sheets for my watercolor sketchbook. Let me know in the comments if you want to see how I make watercolor sketchbook. Some of the sheets are still unused and I'm saving those for future use. This paper is 300 GSM, but it's not 100% cotton. It is still best to use 100 percent cotton and 140 pounds or 300 gsm watercolor paper especially if you will use it with more water and layers and layers of paint i bought this paper because it's best for watercolor calligraphy i use for some commission projects and teaching watercolor calligraphy Going back to my materials, the size of the paper that I am using right now is 9 inches by 5.5 inches. For the watercolors, I'm using my Monio Professional Watercolor Pen Set. For Sepia, it is Shinhan PWC because I don't have Sepia in my watercolor set. For my brush, I'm using my Kolinsky Sable brush in size number 2. I also painted some of the petals of the tulips to make the separation visible. There's a little darker on the separation of the petals. If you observe the reference photo, you will see that there are shadows in between the petals. You can also Google other tulips images and look closely at the division of the petals. I made also darker value on the other petals to show as I look in the reference photo. There are some darker tones too, so take note of that. Remember to add darker values, shadows, and observe the photo reference well. One of the common mistakes of the beginners in watercolor painting is that they do not add shadows and they don't mix colors. Tip. You can simplify your painting. You don't have to paint every detail. The important is that you can express the colors, the light, the shadows. And of course, if you are painting a tulip, it should look like a tulip and should not look like something else. I'm now on the second tulip at the left side of the first tulip that I painted. I started on the left petal while waiting for the first flower to dry and avoid touching or smudging with each other. I also added a little very diluted sepia at the bottom of the flower to show the shadow. I'm also using the sepia to add a bit of details of the tulips like the tips of the flowers and some of the lines. The next petal that I painted I added a bit of opera to make a darker value. I added a darker value very close to the edge of the first petal to show the vision of the petals and it won't look like one huge petal. I will do the same thing on each petal. So while showing you how I do it, I will stop talking as I mentioned earlier, some tips to paint each of the petals of the tulips. I will play a relaxing music so you can enjoy 
watching how I paint the tulips and hopefully it will give you a good mood. I'll be back later after I painted the, all of the flowers.
painting all of the tulips. I have my sap green to paint the stems and the leaves. The leaves of the tulips are simply tall. I also mix sap green with some blue to add more interest, shadow, and contrast. I also mix the sap green with a bit of permanent violet and Van Dyke brown. So I have sap green, sap green with blue, sap green with permanent violet, and sap green with Van Dyke brown. I added first the sap green, then sap green with blue to add a bit of shadow and switch the colors with different mixtures of sap green. I will paint the vase later and since the light source is coming from above, the stems and the leaves are darker. So that is what I am showing in this painting. The leaves and the stems from the reference photo are overlapping. I painted first the stem, so it will be easy for me to add the leaves. The good thing about these two leaves, the leaves are easy to paint with just one or two stroke streaks, and that's it. Then just add some darker value to show the shadows. I will play the music again while I'm painting the leaves. If you notice, I made the stems and the leaves very close to each other. And that way I can easily add the vase later. For the vase, I used ultramarine blue and I added it unevenly. Some parts are darker and some parts are lighter to show light and shadow. I stood it up a bit and took a short break and when I come back, I noticed that I need to add more leaves. Whenever you do any artwork, it is good to take a break like 5 to minutes to 10 minutes. Then you will see something that you need to add in your artwork to make it more beautiful. I added another layer of ultramarine blue because for me, it looks like I need to add color and to enhance the vibrancy. Please note that once the watercolor is dry on the paper, the color is lighter. I chose ultramarine blue because it is a warm color that makes the painting balance when it comes to the coolness and warmness of the colors together in the painting. Once the painting is done, I took copper from my Mungio Professional Watercolor Pen Set. I like using metallic colors for the words and I will write wonderfully made. This painting with calligraphy is a surprise for a friend. Wonderfully made is the name of her business and she creates gift boxes with elegant stylish look for your loved ones. I am showing you her Instagram. You can search wonderfullymade.ph you can follow her if you would like to give some beautiful gift boxes like these what i'm showing you you can follow her and send her a message you can also follow me on instagram as well just search on my art and penmanship so you can see some of my works that i do not actually share on youtube but i upload once a day or twice a day a on about calligraphy and watercolor painting. So you could see my other works there on Instagram. This is my finished work. I hope you like it and hopefully she will like it too. If you want to see more, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the like button and let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video on how to make your DIY sketchbook. Till next time.